the mid-1930s, less than 10% of the rural homes had access to reliable electric utility services, while in urban America most homes and businesses had electricity. This realization prompted President Franklin D. Roosevelt to issue an executive order in 1935 forming the Rural Electrification Administration, the REA. This executive decision helped establish rural electric cooperatives with the goal of bringing reliable energy to rural Americans. Though the government helped finance rural electric cooperatives, the true catalyst was the persistence of the rural people themselves. These committed men and women went from farm to farm to get necessary signatures and obtain the hard-to-come-by $5 sign-up fee required to become a co-op member. The next steps included mapping electric lines with the help of REA engineers, acquiring land easements for the lines from their neighbors, and preparing a loan application to the REA. The electric distribution cooperatives formed as a result of this endeavor powered rural economies across the country. In the heartland, rural electrification enhanced the quality of life for homeowners, businesses, industries, farms, schools, and hospitals in rural communities. While it's easy to now take our reliable, affordable access to electricity for granted, many Kansans can still recall the day the lights went on and how it changed their lives. Your rural electric cooperative remembers the first time customers were connected. Throughout the history of your cooperative, our goal has always been to enhance the quality of your life by providing you with reliable electricity at the lowest possible cost. Because you're more than a customer. You're a member. And that makes all the difference. I was uh, born in 1930, and uh, I remember the dust storm was very, very clear. We had to milk the cows, and we had to hand top the milo, shock the feed, uh, run the, drive the tractor for my dad, and uh, we just, I worked more in the, country, in the outside than my sister did. She was more of a house person, and um, uh, we just worked hard. We didn't know any better. Our daddy told us, if you want to eat, you've got to work. And so, you know, that's all we knew. We went to school and uh, uh, we did not have electricity when I graduated from high school. And uh, at night we had to study by kerosene light and uh, we had table for the five of us. And um, my children, when electricity was off at my house and my five children were home, they had to push their plates up by the side of the kerosene lamp and uh, get on their chairs on their knees so they could eat, find something to eat. Everything you do, you do the best way you can because you make do without the electricity. When, in the wintertime, when we butchered our beeves, my dad hung it on the windmill. And it would, because it was cold back then, we'd have snow on the ground maybe 8, 10, 12 inches deep all winter long. We wore our uh, overshoes out and carried a lantern uh, out to melt the cows and um, he would hang it on the windmill and he'd be there all winter because it was cold enough to keep and he'd slice off what we needed, you know. And uh, then to cure the hog, uh, the hams and shoulders and that kind of thing, he would put some of the salt on it and it would draw the blood out and cure it and uh, he'd have to change that ever so often. And uh, that's just the way then my mother would can the rest of it. and. Uh, Whenever we got time for the beef to uh, maybe start getting too warm, why well, she would can it. And uh, that's the kind of life we lived. And we had chickens, and when we had chickens, we had chickens d uh, dinner and supper. And one chicken made a meal for five of us to, for, uh, at two meals. That was, you know, ten meals from one chicken. And uh, people wouldn't think of that now. And uh, so we had a big garden, always and we, that's just the way we lived. But uh, you know, you don't have water. You don't have uh, uh, an elect uh, no lights, no anything. You're just totally without anything. And uh, my, uh, what I depend on more is my water. That's the most important thing to me is the water. And uh, I don't have cattle now, but I want to water my garden or something. And when my well's down, I'm not happy. We kept our kids busy. 
If you did it without electricity, well, you just did it the hard way. You know, uh, I was born in 1931. And I was too. And we had electricity at the house, and it was made, uh, the house was made in 1922. And we had electricity, so electricity wasn't, it was 32 volt. Kind of unique not to have to have, you know, either wind charger or uh, something, you know, and to have electric lights. Otherwise, you had, you had kerosene. I remember cleaning the, the wick, cutting down the wicks and and cleaning the the globes on the on the kerosene lamps. You know, cleaning for you know in the mor mornings, so they'd be ready to use that evening. But I remember on the Rhine Ranch where we had kerosene lights, you know, at night before they got ever got hooked up to the electric lines. Well, that was in 1948, I think. And uh, a couple of farmers from eastern Kansas come out and wired the house. Well, I think they had about the same equipment that you use now. I you mean, had to dig a hole, didn't you? Yeah, they had a uh, auger on a truck and it raised it up and down and then that same way the winch line on the pole to put the pole in. Of course they weren't as big a poles now as they are now. And all they had 110 yeah, I loved it out there on that farm. It was like when we decided to get married and Lo showed me, of course, I had been divorced and I had a little girl and I had to have help from my mother and daddy and I worked uptown. And when he showed me that place out there on the beaver, that was heaven. That was heaven. I'll never, I was never so thrilled in my life that I was going to get to live out there. And I still love that place. I'm not sure that it wasn't a better life back then. Oh yeah, I think it was. Than it is now, because of the simpleness of it. I think the most scary thing that we ever had was when we had that horrible blizzard in 1950, early in 50, 1957. Yeah. Our daughter was born in August of 57. I was pregnant with her, and we were on the farm. And it was so bad, there was no way, there's no way in God's world, if I'd had to go into the town, I could get there. No, you couldn't get there with, you couldn't get there with a tractor, you couldn't get there with anything. It was so bad that you couldn't see town night, at night time you couldn't even see town lights. And I remember getting up to go to the bathroom and get a drink of water about the third night and I got into the kitchen, and of course it faced south, and I looked up and I could see Scott City Lights. I never was so happy in my life. The reflection of the lights. Yeah. You could it was see wonderful. The lights. It was just wonderful. I could see town lights, so I knew the storm was abating and going, going away. We were uh, living in a small little rental house on some land that we started farming with no running water, no electricity, and we used coal lamps. We graduated to Aladdin lamps with the mantles and the white gas, which made a much better light. But eventually we got the wind charger tower put up and then we had 32 volts of electricity through the batteries that bubbled the water when the wind was blowing. And that was a real revelation because then we could put a, a pump on the water so that the cattle had water and we didn't have to haul it if the wind wasn't blowing. There were limitations to the things you could do when the wind wasn't blowing, like, for instance, the laundry. And because we didn't have electricity in the house, we didn't have an electric water heater. So we had to heat the water like my parents and my grandparents did in a big tub on the stove and uh, laundry became much simpler with even 
the little 32 volt system. Eventually, of course, when we did get dependable electricity, that was another big step because we could do whatever we needed to do the days the wind wasn't blowing. And also, we got to use some wedding presents that had been stored because we didn't have 110 volts to run the toaster or the iron or the clock that we'd gotten for a wedding present. So that was a big celebration day. I think one of the funniest things that were uh, memories of of our son that we asked about if he remembered that. Oh my yes, he said, we got a big box that had a little bitty screen and a black and white TV. And we got to watch the Disney shows, Old Yeller and the Lawrence Welk show and the Marx Brothers and we thought we were really big time. So it was fun besides easier work. Well, you know, I don't remember that it was a real a real significant change except that we knew that we could do whatever needed to be done because the power was there. And also we didn't have to see whether the wind charger was oiled and in shape and if the wind didn't blow we just could depend on the electric company doing what we'd had to do before. When we got to have a water pressure pump to bring water into the house we had a shower. We put a shower in one of the closets, and oh my, that was a wonderful day. Well, I would think that certainly the work in the household, the kitchen work was easier, that you knew it was there when you needed it, and uh, like I said, the kids had entertainment that they enjoyed when they were tired from running outside, they could sit down and watch the TV, and uh, that was a big step, and I think probably at one time we had had a 12 volt radio that we had a cable to a car battery. So when we had a real radio that we knew was going to be there when we needed it, it and for information that maybe the weather and those kind of things that we hadn't had before, couldn't depend on before, that was a, that was a real step up. There's no way they can understand what it was not to have the electricity because they've always had it. And the only way they can know is if they happen to be in one of the storms where they didn't have electricity for a few days and how much they missed it. But to be a part of the bigger picture where you were a member of, of a uh, company that had your best interest at heart, that was so important and it is still important because by combining numbers and bigger, bigger um, needs, they're going to be a stronger, more more viable company. So we are just strong supporters of the co-op. And uh, Marvin had a wonderful 29 years as a board member of Victory Electric and also 21 years of KEPCO. So we were especially appreciative of what they did. Yeah, yes. That's right. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Out here on our line, you know, we were kind of one of the later ones to get fully developed out this far. And uh, prior to my coming home from the service in 1953, well, our old house up there, it was a stone house and the different electricians had told Dad that it couldn't be wired. And finally there was a neighbor guy that was uh, sort of an electrician he's qualified, certified. And he says, oh, I can do it. And so he came in and got it done. And then we started seeing about getting REA to come in. So that was in 1953, the fall of 1953, when uh, we first got electricity from Western Co-op. The school teacher up here, a little old country school <coughs> up here, what they call an Orion, she had to keep a kerosene lamp there to light it whenever the dust storms came in. <laughs> so we both go back a ways. So. Well, I, for one thing, I remember we didn't have much of a, a water pressure system, so it was 
mostly the outhouse and the path, and, but uh, we did have a pressure system that we had to pan pump by hand when it, we did want pressure for an indoor water system while we had to go down and pump up by hand, pump the pressure up. And that was a big thing when we at least got a light plant that worked by we could crank it up and have it run and build the pressure up. And so that was several years before we got electricity off the line. I taught country school before I went to college, and we didn't have any electricity out here. And I carried the stuff to start the fire, and we carried water, and so. And then for the evening programs that we'd have for Christmas and that, I guess they hooked up, uh, had lamps because we didn't have electricity out there, but we got by and didn't know anything different, so we just went with the flow. I'd say it made life much more convenient. Folks got a deep freeze and, of course, a toaster is one of Dad's first favorite things that he got. It was just convenient, I guess you would say. Not it made it much easier, really. You still had to clean the floor and all that kind of stuff. Wash dishes. So. And I guess a sewing machine, I learned to sew on a treadle machine, so it wasn't until I had an electric one, I suppose, till I was teaching home ec, I think. And I bought an electric sewing machine, so it was different, but it was it was nice to see the difference in uh, convenience, I guess. Oh, it's it's all very beneficial, I'd say. It's one of the greatest things that's happened to rural America, I guess. I've heard that phrase a lot, you know, but it's true. We moved on a farm right after we was married, and every farm, you know, had to have a uh, source of income. So we had some milk, a few milk cows and chickens and hogs and like that, and there was chores to do, and most farm chores are dark chores. And of course, we carried a lantern, and you know, a lantern doesn't shine very far. And I remember when we first got electricity, I put up two yard lights. And man, that first night we went out to do chores and flipped on them yard lights and well, kind of scared the cows too, I think. But it was really nice. We could see what was going on. Oh boy, it was tough. Just, just like your, well, your water, for instance. Uh, on, on our particular place, uh, we had a hand pump. It's just outside the back door but you had to pump and carry the water in, you know, as you used it. And uh, then there was uh, the, the laundry part. Uh, we had a good wash machine for the time. It was a twin cylinder Maytag gas motor, but uh, you had to, to uh, keep filling it uh, with gas all the time when you use a when you was uh, doing laundry and you had to, of course, heat the water and carry it and dump it in the washing machine where after you got electricity, well, we had hot water, we had everything. And uh, of course, one of the first things I bought was a, a electric motor for that washing machine. So it, it made it a lot easier. But now, oh man, I mean, we, whenever we need water, we've got water all over the place. We've got two pumps, electric pumps, submersibles, and uh, we, we've just got water wherever we want it. Hmm. To begin with, uh, I think Nor it was Northwest Kansas Electric at that time, and uh, they went out and uh, wherever they were going to locate a substation, every line that went out of that, they had to, if there was a farm along there, they tried to get everybody to sign up. Well, our area is so sparsely populated, it took everybody to make it work. 
there's so much that you can do with electricity that you just can't do with anything else. And, and I mean, around today's farm, I, I'm, I'm getting too old to use a lot of that stuff, but I got two sons that are farming, and, and I just can't imagine doing without electricity at all. I mean, it's, there's everything, uh, well, everybody's got a shop, and you've got all kinds of electric drills, welders, everything like that, and you just can't hardly get along without it. And get involved in your in your electric co-op. When they got station electricity in our country, and I, I always believe that was one of the greatest things that ever happened to our country. I was born in 1933 during the middle of the Depression. We lived in a sod house till 1943, which, by the way, I brought a picture of that sod house that I might share with you. The only electricity we had in the house was a radio. We had two batteries for the car. One was on the radio and one was on the car, so the generator would charge it, and then we would swap. And we did have running water in the house because quite often my mother would say, take a bucket and run out to the well and get some water. But uh, we enjoyed the radio. We had to be very cautious with it, to uh, not use it when Dad wasn't there because in the evenings he really liked watching or listening to Fibber McGee and Molly. And we listened to Jack Armstrong and Inner Sanctum and a lot of the things like that. In 1943, we moved to a different house, and my dad put in a 32-volt generator, which a lot of people, at that time, people were kind of going to either wind chargers or generators. I suspect that when the electricity finally came through the, the 110, they were appalled at the way we had wired the 32 volt because a lot of, I remember in our attic, there was some bare wires and you just used insulators like you'd use on an electric fence. But the, the real change, I think, was quite likely, well, first of all, when we had the 32 volts, about the only thing that I recall we had was an electric iron and a electric drill, which didn't work very well. It just didn't seem to have enough amps to drill much in the way of going through metal because up to that time, when you needed to fix something made out of metal, you would take a very small bit and a bracing bit, which modern people probably don't know what a bracing bit is, but you put a bit in a handle that you could turn, and that's how you drilled holes, and it would take half an hour to drill a hole through a quarter inch piece of metal. So electricity did change that and I think uh, probably one of the best and biggest changes was the, that uh, when we got electricity was the labor saving devices for people like my mother who had, when we lived in the sod house we had a Maytag Bat or uh, motor operated washing machine you carried the water in, you heated it on a, a stove either that was burning either wood or coal. And I know we didn't rinse very much. It also had a, when you finished washing the clothes, there was a hand crank deal which you squeezed the water out and then you put them out on the line. So I think uh, probably some of the biggest things that really changed were. Uh, really helping ladies have more conveniences and not have to work so hard. And one of them I remember was the going getting away from that hand pump air compressor that we used to use, where you'd pump up a tire and it took about 20 minutes. Those are probably the major things I remember. We moved to the different house. It was two houses my dad had combined together. And when we moved down there, we had that 32-volt plant. And I remember well that 
it had a generator and then it had batteries and when the batteries got low enough the generator would kick on and then the it was a gas generator and you would hear it out there trying to start if it didn't start right away if you went someplace and didn't turn it off you'd come home and if it had got low and tried to start it would run your batteries down trying to start while you were gone so you had to be pretty cautious about that plus in the winter when it was really cold I remember my dad about the only time I ever heard him curse was when the generator wasn't running it was about five below and he'd have to go out and reset the points or whatever he did to make it run each Step was a major improvement. When we went from the kerosene and the liquid oil and the uh, gas light to the 32, that was a big step up. But the big step was when you got electricity that you could depend on. The 32 volt was not really all that dependable, as I think probably the wind chargers weren't all low the way the wind been blowing lately. It wouldn't have been much of a problem. But the dependability of the service, plus one of the things that I know my dad appreciated was when your electricity went out, you could call Lane Scott and they would come and fix it if it was cold and you weren't out there someplace trying to figure out how to make your 32 volt work. So just so many conveniences that we take for granted came in television. In 1952, I was in the Navy Air Force in aviation training in Norman, Oklahoma, and I saw a bunch of people looking through a window. I said, what's going on? They said, it's television. So we walked over and looked at this little box about like this that just looked like a snowstorm. I didn't think it would ever catch on, but it became a major part of life, and it was a prelude to all kinds of things that we have now, like the smartphones and all that sort of stuff that I'm not too skillful at working. I think it's important to pay attention to anything that gives you service. It seems like uh, I remember back in the 70s, Richard Nixon discontinued the 2% loans to rural electric co-ops, and there was a big upheaval over that. Uh, and eventually, the loans came back. I don't know at what rate, but... Uh, I think Bob Dole had a considerable amount to do with that. sit behind the propellers and I would fly to wherever I wanted to go. <laughs> it was a plaything. Was it Speed Queen wash machine roll? Is that one we first bought? Mm-hmm. Then, then we went to the basement and we had Maytag. He didn't like them very well. And then, what did we have after that? I can't remember. Then, of course, when we moved to town Next here, but we had everything, you know. that. Was We had had a floor furnace that we operated on propane that heated our house. And we went to baseboard heaters. Bob may even have crawled around under my house and helped put those in. That would have been, you remember when he was here, Bob? Yes, I do remember, but I was still in high school. Oh, you're not as old as I thought you were. <laughs> and I remember this one particular gentleman he was of German descent, and he had a 32-volt um, outfit. And, uh, of course, that would serve lights, and he wouldn't sign up. He said he didn't need that. And uh, I remember we went to a meeting, and they were still trying to convince him. And uh, his wife, they were both German, and... Uh, Finally, his wife turned to him and said, well, Ernie, do you want electricity or do you want this lights? And he got up and signed his name. 
when I was substituting up here at kindergarten where they had learned to read in October. And a little kid came up and asked, Mrs. Abel, can you help me with a computer? I didn't tell him I knew nothing about it. I just said, I don't know too much about the computer. And he didn't hesitate, and he said, oh, I know all. He stressed the word all, all about the computer. I just need you to read the words. Are there any uh, electric items that you use now in your household that uh, make life easier? Um, not really. I can't think of a single thing that I use. Uh, you know, we used to churn our butter, and... Uh, I don't have a cow anymore, so I don't churn butter. And uh, a washboard, but I don't use a washboard. And uh, <laughs> I have some of the old things, but I don't use them. But are the modern utilities better? No, they don't last as long. They don't last any time at all. <laughs> but your washboard still works, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs>